Hey guys, welcome to Fred TMK Gaming. I'm Fred and today we're having a look at the MT-25 Soviet Tier 6 light tank. So, this is what we get as a, re as a replacement for the T-50-2. Now, um, of course people are asking themselves if this is a worthy um, replacement for the motorcycle-like T-50-2. Well, I have to say it does play a bit differently. Um, it's not really that much of a scout anymore. It's it's still fast. It has a powerful engine, um, as we're going to see. But it's not. It's not. It doesn't have this motorcycle-like feeling to it anymore. So. Um, Let's have a look at the characteristics first and then compare it to the old T50-2 and um, after that we're going to compare it to the VK-2801, the tier 6 German uh, light tank. So the MT-25 gets 570 hit points, um, well that's kind of average, um, nothing to complain about really. Um, its weight is 25 tons, and um, yeah, that's that's pretty heavy. Um, because if we compare it to the bad jet, that weighs also 25 tons. So it's a pretty heavy uh, vehicle for light tank. We do get 600 horsepower um, engine. That's not bad for a tier six light tank. Um, but it really needs it because again it weighs 25 tons so and it's a light tank and it sh should be fast so it does really need those 600 horsepower um, speed limit is 22 kilometers an hour now it can reach that speed limit but um, mostly only going downhill so it's gonna hit about uh, 60 to 65 um, going on flat ground so it is quite fast but Maybe not as fast as a T-71 uh, or an AMX-13. Uh, um, about the armor, well, really, the way this thing plays, it's, again, it's not really a scout tank anymore, I think, and so it kind of, it doesn't really depend on its armor, but it's good that it's there, and um, yeah, it's, it's not bad, but it's it's not that great either. Um, we do get some nice sloping here, so 45 millimeters from the front, we can bounce some shots from maybe other tier seven light tanks or maybe even tier five tanks if we get lucky matchmaking, um, which this thing doesn't tend to do. But it does it does have some all round armor, 45 millimeters on the on the turret all round and 45 on the front 40 on the sides and rear well this is pretty much easily penetrated but again maybe from this angle here and the turret sides if you shoot from here and from from here you can get some bounces so but again it's it's only a tier 6 light tank we can't really expect it to have that much of armor um so um the gun we do get the same gun uh like we did on the T52 the 75 mm CIS4 um very good rate of fire under 3 seconds reload time that is that's really good um 112 mm of uh average penetration well not bad for a TLR 6 light tank should be enough. Um, however, only 85 damage. So it really needs those uh, incredible 22 rounds a minute um, to really dish out some damage because we're not going to do that much damage per shot. Um, very good accuracy for a Russian tank, 0 0.34. Um, that's not bad. But I don't think it's it's not, it's not a sniper tank really. It's not um, for that to be. It doesn't. Uh, do enough damage per shot. Um, the aiming time 2.3 seconds is not really bad but well 
it doesn't really matter actually because we're not sitting uh, anywhere and waiting for the radio to aim on target. We're mostly going to drive around enemy tanks and trying to get their flanks, so it doesn't really matter. And yeah, that's the gun. So so it's the same like we got on the T50-2. Um, they didn't change that one. Um, if we go further, we can see the, the mobility. 48 degrees second traverse speed. That's that's pretty good. That's not bad at all. Um, yeah, that does. That's definitely enough to outmaneuver some mediums and heavy tanks. Um, third traverse also 48, the same. So it's it's very mobile. It's it's fast enough and it's mobile. It does have a decent gun for its tier. It's it's not great, but it's it's decent. Um, if you can get get around the sides of of heavy tanks or, or medium tanks, you can really punch shot after shot into them with this uh, in incredible um, rate of fire. So um, view range 370 meters that we're not really going to need, um, and 730 meters of signal range. That's actually pretty good for a Soviet tank um, tier 10 radio. But again, we're not really going to need this, as this isn't really a pure scout tank. So, um, so much for the statistics over here. Um, let's compare this to, no. Let's compare this to, set as primary, and set this one as primary and uh, now we don't use that so let's compare these two machines because Wargaming did the same to this um, as they did to this thing only that they um, changed the model of the tank so they re removed um, the T50-2 introduced th this thing instead on tier 6 and uh, basically one could say nerfed it. Um, the same like th they did with uh, this thing. However, um, I think that this uh, VK2801 does get better matchmaking than the MT25 because I faced some tier 10 matches um, already and this thing um, usually doesn't get into ten tier 10 anymore. So maybe they need to tweak something um, about the matchmaking that this vehicle gets um, because I don't really think that it's um, really that usable in tier 10 so let's compare these let's compare the guns um, well now let's start with the statistics um, let's just bring up both of them so the VK does have a little more health um, that that's not quite surprising because it's it's a German tank and they tend to have more health than um, their counterparts of other nations. Um, it weighs a ton more, not that much, but it also has um, 50 hel um, horsepower more. So, in terms of mobility and speed, it's not really that much of, of a difference. It does have 60 kilometers an hour as speed limit as opposed to 20, uh, uh, 72 kilometers an hour, but again, this thing doesn't really reach its uh, 20, uh, its 72 kilometers an hour that easily, so it doesn't really matter that much. And going downhill, this uh, vehicle can pretty easily reach uh, 65 to 70, so it's not really that um, big of a difference. The traverse speed is the same. Um, the armor, it's is pretty similar. It does have a, a little bit better um, front armor. Uh, 50 millimeters compared to 45. Um, however, its side armor isn't as good as the one um, on the MT25. But so I think if we look at the sloping, it does have pretty good overall sloping. So if you then angle this thing like this probably um, 
I think it's going to have more of an effective armor that than this, because as with many Russian tanks, it has these cheeks here on the side. So even if the MT25 driver angles it like this, enemies can sh can still shoot here and have a flat area to penetrate. So I think someone who knows how to use uh, this armor can can do better with this than with this. However, someone who is not so experienced and it's is probably just going to drive in and uh, trying to um, circle enemy tanks to death, probably this thing has the better all-round armor. Um, so, well that about the armor. Um, now let's get to the guns of these things. Let's get this to the side. The guns. Now, let's first compare the 7.5 millimeter um, uh, centimeter KWK40 L48 to the this four. Um, it does have a little bit um, a slower rate of fire, but not that much. 17.65 uh, is still pretty good. Um, less penetration but more damage. So it's only two millimeters l uh, less penetration and we, we're going to do uh, up to 25 more average damage. So that's pretty good. Um, accuracy is actually worse. This is quite surprising, but I g we do get a better aiming time. So one could argue that this thing is better with this gun at sniping or supporting like a very mobile light sniper than this which is clearly more at home and um, in close quarter fighting as um, opposed to this of course we do get the 10.5 centimeter KWK 42 L28 cannon for the VK um, well that's the low tier German derp gun, so we can get up to 410 points of damage. Um, of course, this is very much compared to the 85, but we only have 7.5 rounds a minute, so I think at the end of the day we're not going to do any more damage with this than with this in close combat, because this again does have decent penetration and this doesn't, and we have very bad accuracy compared to pretty good accuracy and uh, the aiming time is the same but even if we do hit and do penetrate which isn't guaranteed with this we're still not going to do um, the same damage probably as uh, this thing is going to do with like four shots um, so yeah I think um, it really depends on on your playstyle and how you like it and if you like derp guns of course this is very good but if you don't like derp guns then I think this is the better option um, so that about the gun choices um, now so maybe as you can see um, these two tanks are not that different um, they really are not and Let's have a look at some of the available equipment for the MT25, uh, the consumables and the crew skills. So about the equipment, um, a toolbox would be always useful um, for repair speed if you want to get the, the uh, tracks back up. Um, that's for a light tank always important. Fuel tank durability, we don't really need that. Gun laying drive again, we don't need that because we're not going to stand uh, somewhere and wait for the radical to aim. Engine durability, again, not really needed for this. Um, coated optics, maybe, but really I, I don't think it should be played as a scout and this is primarily primarily um, useful for real scouts um, and I don't think that this is, re is a real scout. So, um, telescope, again, not useful for this. Um, ammo rack, we don't really need that. It's not really prone to ammo rack damage, as I can tell right now. Um, Suspension load capacity and durability, maybe, if, you, if you're trying to not uh, getting your tracks blown off all the time. Um, 
Kmonet, not really. We're not really going to be stationary um, and trying to shoot at, en at enemies and trying to stay undetected. Um, so what I would go with is the improved ventilation, of course, and it's very cheap, only 50,000 credits. Um, maybe the light spall liner for uh, pr protection against uh, ramming and, and explosions. Um, and as uh, third, the enhanced torsion bars, or the toolbox, depending on your on your liking. I think the rest is not really needed for this uh, vehicle. So um, for the consumables, um, I just have my standard consumables loaded. Um, but I think you could take land lease oil instead, maybe of the fire extinguisher. Um, I'm not a, fr a friend of a uh, removed speed governor, as this damages the engine. I would rather go for left lease oil if you want more um, engine power. Um, so yeah, but repair kit and small first aid kit and I have fire extinguisher. This is just the the standard um, standard load loadout I, I have on almost all my tanks, so that's that. Um, yeah, um, whoops, this is in the wrong order, accept, so, um, crew skills, um, you might notice that one of my crew members is at 100%, the radio operator, while the rest isn't, um, that's because the T-50-2 uh, didn't have a radio operator, and when these two vehicles were swapped, uh, with each other, um, everyone got a free 100% uh, trained radio operator so that's why um, I do have this one right now with 30% uh, on repairs and the rest is still on 91% uh, um, so yeah um, repairs always good again I like to re use repairs as my uh, first skill on almost all my tanks um, if you're not a fan of that um, you could uh, take recon, but again, you're not a classical scout, so that's only of limited use. Six cents could be useful, but um, I would go with uh, repairs. The rest isn't really useful for this tank, and um, maybe brothers in arms if you want to go down that road. Um, so yeah, but camouflage firefighting. I'm not a friend of these, um, especially not on light tanks. For the gunner. Um, repairs first, or brothers in arms, and what could be useful is um, dead eye, um, because if you're in close combat, you're it's pretty good when you have an uh, extra chance to cripple the enemy tank by destroying its crew members or modules. Um, snapshot during turret ro uh, rotation, improved accuracy are always good for this, because again we are going to circle enemy tanks with this and. Uh, trying to render them useless like this. Um, designated target, well I don't think that's quite important armor again. The gun is not that big and well, if it gets destroyed the gun is usually the first thing that's getting fixed on the tank so well I would go with dead eye or snapshot and repairs and brothers in arms for the gunner. For the driver uh, again repairs or brothers in arms um, and you can actually play this tank as a ramming machine um, if you're planning on doing so of course you can also take controlled impact but um, I would uh, probably rather take uh, off-road driving or smooth ride because these are two um, very important factors for this tank and for its playstyle um, clutch braking of course it's also important but we already have uh, 48 degrees of uh, rotation speed of of uh, traverse speed, so we don't really need uh, clutch braking. Um, of course, we can use it. You could use it, but I don't think it's necessary because it's already the base skill is already the base value is already high enough. So um, that's for the driver for the radio operator. Um, I do have repairs first or brothers in arms. Um, situational awareness is pretty much is uh, pretty useful for this um, signal range, maybe, but I would probably go for situational awareness and or signal boosting. Um, 
but again these three skills are again uh, mostly useful for really classical scouts for real um, scouts like the T71 or the AMX13 um, so I think we should probably go with uh, situational awareness for the radio operator um, for the loader repairs brothers or brothers in arms and these skills are pretty useless I would go with a, a, um, adrenaline rush safe storage and intuition they are not of any use in this tank I think um, so yeah go with adrenaline rush as a second skill and one of these as as first skill so that about crew skills and equipment and uh, consumables what we're now going to do is we're going to do the uh, compare the MT25 to the T50-2 on the uh, World of Tanks official website um, so yeah let's do that so let's have a look at the, at the different available modules for both tanks so the third uh, traverse speed is actually a little bit better on the MT25 with 48 degrees per second compared to 45 degrees per second on the T50-2 um, and we do have a little bit better armor um, but that's only a minor difference um, again the gun is exactly the same the 57 mm is 4 um, now if we have a look at the radio it's also the same has the same characteristics and it's the same module um, the tracks um, are a little bit different um, the MT25 has more tr uh, traverse speed it has 48 tra degrees traverse speed compared to 38 on the T50-2 so it's actually a little bit more mobile than the T50-2 um, now the engine if we have a look at this now we see that the MT25 does have a 600 horsepower engine compared to a 550 horsepower engine on the T50-2 now it is important to know that um, the T50-2 only weighs 13 tons compared to almost 26 tons on the MT25 so it's half as heavy as the MT25 so its power to weight ratio is almost twice as good as uh, the power to weight ratio on the MT25 and that's where the, mo the motorcycle like feeling comes from which is now gone because again it only has 50 horsepower less th than the MT25 but it's it's only its weight is only half of that of the MT25 so can clearly see here that the scout like feeling of the T50-2 is uh, gone and we have more like VK2801 feeling like a very m mobile small battle tank now you might have noticed that those two images were not from the uh, official wargaming website but from the World of Tanks Wikipedia page um, that's because uh, if you look up the 50-2 on the official wargaming website you can find um, its engine and its gun um, are different um, it, it, it only has the f uh, 45 millimeter cannon and only a 300 horsepower engine so my guess would be that they are eventually reintroducing this tank at some point in the future maybe as a tier 4 of, or tier 5 um, regular light tank um, with normal matchmaking and not uh, scout matchmaking um, but enough with all these stats and modules and everything let's just see how this thing plays so it's a tier 8 match on Eurovanka um, it's probably the best matchmaking you're going to get with this and yeah you can see it's 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 a quite fast mobile media um, sorry light tank not that motorcycle like like the T52 but still not that bad and uh, this is kind of an example of how you shouldn't be playing this tank because I'm kind of trying to play it like a real scout and you're gonna see soon that that's not a good idea so here we are driving through the woods and now I'm going over the field to maybe scout some enemies over there trying to get to those hills behind where the tiger is standing I'm kind of just going through here and trying to scout enemy tanks and 
providing some surveillance. But then, oh, I get hit from the tiger. Getting into cover. Well. Then I scout a T-21. And T is going to go for me. Unfortunately. He's under fire, but still he's going forward. And I'm under fire too. And yeah. I miss. Hit him once, but. Don't really have a chance against this guy. And I'm dead. So. Really, like a scout like this, like trying to scout the enemy advance and going forward as uh, the first tank in your team. This, that's really not a good idea with this. With the T50-2 you could dodge fire and everything, but that's not possible with this anymore. So let's have a look at at, uh, at another match. So again, here we are on, uh, what's that map called? Uh, Pearl River? <laughs> and uh, here, again, as you can see, um, we're in a tier 10 match. And there's really no point in going forf uh, forward right now and trying to scout anything. Um, so what I'm just going to do is I'm just finding a place to hide myself in. And I'm, c I'm kind of uh, waiting um, until uh, the enemy team is softened up a little bit. So I can then go forward and uh, rush in and try to distract enemies from our main force or maybe even kill something on my own. Um, but again, I have to wait uh, until the the um, the enemy is really a, a bit softened up because going in right now would result in instant death. So right now I'm looking at the map and I'm seeing many um, many enemy heavy tanks are in that small pathway on the northeastern side of the map. And I'm trying to and I'm I'm deciding to join the Lorraine and the other medium down there. And maybe I, I'm g gonna be able to slip through and kill the artillery or something like this. But I'm tired of sitting right now and I'm, I'm going in. Doesn't look too bad. Oh, there are two mediums spotted. Lorraine and another one. Uh, seems to be a T62A. Well, tier 10 competition. But now I'm, I'm really rushing in. So you can see now going downhill uh, slightly. I'm reaching those 72 kilometers an hour. And I'm not planning to stop right now. Although there's an another Tiger 2, but still, I'm not planning to stop. I'm planning to rush in and hoping that my team is gonna follow me. Take on the Lorraine, driving by. Just drive by shooting on the Lorraine because I know I can penetrate him. I can't penetrate the T62. And at this point, I'm just stopping because the Lorraine is obviously reloading. The T62 is focusing on the T54E1. Another one into him, and bam, I actually killed him. <laughs> so, there's this Tiger 2 still. So I'm trying to go around. If I'm lucky, maybe I can get him. Oh, but there's a Yak Tiger. There's a Yak Tiger. But he, he fires and he misses. Um, so now the Yak Tiger has a pretty good rate of fire, but still, I can. I probably can circle him, and I'm on his side bouncing him of a bad angle now I'm basically just staying behind him put another one into him another one and there's the artillery the object coming up behind me <laughs> I'm not realizing <laughs> and he kills me <laughs> unfortunately I didn't realize this soon enough I if I um, had I maybe it maybe w would have been possible to go around the object, kill that one first, and then go back on the Yak Tiger. But still, pretty good for a tier 10 match. Um, it was a win in the end, and yeah, I got a kill. I killed a, uh, the Lorraine and damaged the Yak Tiger, and 
the artillery was also out of action because of me for some time and yeah the rain is going to go around and kill the object so I think that's that's how it should be played in if you get into higher team matches or, or even at uh, tier 8 just stay behind wait like three minutes five minutes watch the map and see if there's some opportunity to slip past or go in and then support your team or, gil or go kill the artillery or uh, something similar so yeah that's uh, it for this match so the MT25 what's the conclusion on this I think it's still a good tank it's it's a fun tank to drive but it's not like the T50-2 anymore again it's not a real scout it's not just the motorcycle like speedy mobile the T50-2 was um, it's really it's more like the VK2801 gets a little bit better matchmaking maybe but still it gets uh, still in tier 10 matches so don't be so don't rely on that too much um, so yeah it's it, again it, it plays pretty similar to the VK2801 um, just with a different gun that's pretty much it um, yeah so if you like the VK2801 you're going to like this one if not you're probably not going to like this one if you're really into real scout tanks and want to just be fast and uh, drive ar around the map um, you're probably going to have to look maybe in the French line you can grab some AMX uh, 1319 or 1317 um, or maybe even some Chinese high tier light tanks the WZ132 or 131 on tier 7 and 8 and um, also of course very popular is the T71 um, tier 7 light tank from the American uh, autoloader line um, that's also pretty much fun to drive as I heard and yeah so that's it pretty much um, if you like this video uh, please like it give it a thumbs up uh, maybe subscribe if you want to s uh, see more of this content in the future there will definitely be more and uh, yeah again thanks for watching and bye bye